on church on a Saturday, but here we are. Uh, my name is Lion uh, Daniel Marty Elkins. Uh, I consider myself to be an evangelist of, of lions. I was brought into the association uh, two and a half years ago uh, by a club that had existed for eight years. Their average age of their club was about uh, between 68 to 70. They were looking at uh, their community and realized that they wanted younger members to join, but they didn't know how to go about doing it. So they decided to form a branch club. Now, for those of you not familiar, a branch club is a, a club that can be formed with five members. It's a small subunit of a club. And they spent about two years calling every single local nonprofit church organization to try and find a place to base this branch club until they called my community center. And they invited us to a meeting. And on my first day as a lion, as the branch club president, I became a member of a board that had existed for eight years. On day one, they empowered youth. And if there's anything that I have to say today that you take away, empower youth. If you want youth to be able to join this association, find ways to empower them so that they can feel like they have a, a leadership. So this is a bit of a preview. Uh, I'm doing another session right after this, but these two things link. Uh, this is not a lecture, it is a discussion. Conversations matter. So I hope that this is the start of a conversation that lasts for the rest of our lifetimes. Please, get in touch with me on social media. Let's continue this conversation long beyond this because this is something that we need to find an answer to if there are going to be people sitting in these chairs in 20 years. That's, that's the entire ballgame is uh, youth, which is why it is so amazing to come to a district that has focused their entire conference on youth. That is such an incredible thing. I've been traveling around, and this is the first time I've seen that done, so you guys are way ahead of the game. Um, Pretty quick preview of today's discussion. So how do you identify service-minded youth? We're going to talk about a youth needs assessment, uh, three magic words, and uh, raising the next generation. Just because of time constraints, we won't get through everything here, but then we will continue the conversation uh, in the presentation uh, afterwards. So how do you identify service-minded youth and young adults? That's the question I hear wherever I go. They say, well, some people believe that young people don't want to serve. And that's not true, you just have to find where they are. So, despite what those might believe, there are many youth who are service-minded and who'd be willing to join Lions Clubs International. So, how do you locate them? What types of organizations might they already be a part of? Does anyone have, have an idea? If you were looking for service-minded youth or younger people in your community, where would you look? Yeah. Scouts. JCs. Yeah, JCs, absolutely. Uh, churches, absolutely. 4-H, four, four that's exactly right. So seek and ye shall find, right? So there are people who are out there. So myself, I am a graduate of an AmeriCorps program. Uh, I did a public allies. It was uh, 1,700 hours of service over the course of, of 10 months. And if you can do that, you'd make a pretty good line. So they're in every community. Uh, finding people uh, who are already serving, it's just a matter of looking to those who are already served. And then the key is being able to convince them how Lions can help them in their service. See, and that's an that's, uh, important part of realizing what they want to do. And this is a, a common mistake. I hear people invite young members in, and then they tell them what they're going to do. And they say, this is what our club is, it, it does, and this is, you're going to do this. You're going to join. Uh, how many of you attended uh, PDGJ's membership uh, uh, seminar? Amazing seminar. If you need someone to come talk about membership, please invite him, because he said a very important thing. When you bring in a new member, there are essentially three ways that you can go about doing it. One, you can tell them, you know, hey, this is what we're doing. Uh, two, you can say, oh, you've got an idea. Why don't, why don't you just do it yourself? Or three, you can empower them. In, in, in my club, which started as a branch club of five members, and now has 126, okay? And it is a repeatable process. It is a process that, that you can do too. We have a rule, and that rule is don't say no. On the first day, when someone comes in as a lion into now the Belfont Lions Club, when they get inducted, we ask them how they would like to serve our community. Do you have an idea? 
And whatever that idea is, we try it. Even if it doesn't work, we try it at least once. But they never get a no answer. So on day one as a lion, they feel like, oh my gosh, I just joined a service organization, and they want to hear my voice. My voice matters. When it comes to youth, there is nothing more important than that. So figuring out what the youth want to do is extremely important. For us, when we had five members, I went out to the community and just started talking to people and said, what do you guys need? Now, you all know the, the slogan, where there's a need, there's a lion. How do you know what the need is? The need that your club might be serving might have been a need that existed in 1957. And you've just continued doing that. And it's a wonderful thing, but unless you ask. So I'm sitting there, I'm so excited. We got a brand new club, we got five members, we're gonna serve our community, and we wanted to focus on youth. So we asked the youth, and we said, well, what do you guys want? And they said, well, Lion Daniel, we wanna play chess. I said, excuse me? Chess. Well, the movie Queen of Cotway had just come out, and a bunch of kids had seen it, and they wanted to learn how to play chess. And they said, could the Lions teach us how to play chess? I said, I guess so. <laughs> Why don't next Thursday you come on out and we'll have a chess club? Six o'clock, bring your friends. So eight kids showed up, and I frantically spent the week trying to figure out and remember how to play chess. Because <laughs> it had been about 20 years since I played chess, but the kids in our community wanted to learn how to play chess. And I talked to some of the Lions, the more seasoned Lions in our district, and I said, um, they asked me, what, what is your first pro service project? And I said, we're starting a chess club. <laughs> I said, well, that's not one of the five service areas. <laughs> I said, well, that's what the kids wanted. So that first Thursday, uh, eight kids came. Uh, the next Thursday, 15 kids came. In about a month, we had around 30. And then an amazing thing happened. We ended up recruiting the parents of almost every single one of those children that we spent time working with. Because they were so grateful that here was this organization that was willing to spend time with their kids. That maybe they worked till six or seven o'clock and the Lions provided a safe space. So focus on service. Uh, youth want to serve, they want to make a difference. So when you're talking to a younger member, don't invite them to a meeting. Don't. Invite them to a service project. Show them the soul of what Lions are, and that's serving our community. So from our chess club, I then asked the youth, what else do you want to do? And they said, well, uh, Lion Daniel, uh, we like to ride bikes. I said, that's great. Do you guys have bikes? And they said, no. So I got on Facebook and said, does anybody have any bikes? I've got kids who want to ride bikes. And I went through the Lions, and I, I was so excited. I got seven bikes donated. So I said, Friday, come out, meet us, and we're going to ride bikes. And I had about 45 kids show up. <laughs> so all of a sudden, that's a good problem to have, right? And they said, but Lion Daniel, you know, what are we going to do? We, we don't have bikes. I said, I tell you what, I'll make you a deal. You come out next Friday, and instead of coming out at 5 o'clock, come out at 4 o'clock. And for every one of you that comes out at 4 o'clock, we're going to walk around our community with a trash bag. And we're going to pick up cigarette butts and trash can, you know, we're just going to clean our community. And for every hour that you do picking up trash, I will give you one point. And if you earn 25 points, I will buy you a bike myself. Every single one of those kids earned their bikes. And then the amazing thing happened. I figured they got their bikes. That would be the end of it. And they said, no, no, my Daniel, we can still come and earn points, right? <laughs> so, uh, sure, well, why not? Right, and now we do club points. So we take them on bike, bike trails. And then if they earn enough, we can go and do that. And that became our Leo club. We focused on something that what the youth wanted, which was riding bikes. And we find a way to connect it to service. I don't care what it is. They want to have a video game tournament, have yourself a video game tournament and find a way to connect that to service. Because then you're showing that they care, uh, that you care. Now, there are three magic words that I use in absolutely everything I do. In partnership with. 
When we only had five members, I sat down and I created the list. And that list was a list of every single nonprofit, every single church, every single temple, every single organization within a 20 mile radius that had the same mission as us, serving youth. And I wrote down the names of all those places and I wrote down all the contacts of all those places. And I called them and I said, when's your next event? And they told me. And we took our five lions and we got on our lions gear and we went out to their event and we volunteered for them. We just showed up. We showed up and we worked our hearts out. At the end of almost every single event, invariably, the people would say, who are you people? <laughs> well, we're the lions. Well, you know, what do lions do? Well, you're already winning because they're asking you, right? So what do lions do? Well, lions serve. You guys were so amazing. How do we get you to come back to our next event? Well, why don't you come to our meeting and tell us all about it? Right there, you begin to have a partnership. So everything we do is in partnership with other organizations. And because we don't have to exist in a silo, there are so many, it's your local church, whatever it is, find organizations to partnership because I have to tell you, if you are waiting at your pancake breakfast, for that next perfect member to walk through the door, you might be waiting a long time. And by forming partnerships, we showed people what Lions were about. I, tell, I say, don't ever tell someone what Lions is. Show them through your service, and then you will discover a whole world of new potentials by partnering, especially if you're then focusing on, on, on youth. So, what organizations exist in your community that could be potential partners for service events? Does anyone have a partnership that they, they do on a regular basis? Okay, well we have a challenge now. Yes, in that. Um, Rotary and we partnered and we screened 3,400 kids together. Oh, that is amazing. Partnering with Rotary, there is a, a park, it's a special disabilities park that is in Monroe, Louisiana that I visited uh, last year on one of these trips, and it was formed by the Kiwanis Rotary and Lions Clubs. Neither one of the three organizations had the capacity to build that park on their own. They formed a partnership together and they created uh, something new. So forming partnerships, especially when it comes uh, to serving youth, so here's a quick example. We serve, they serve. Together we become stronger and more capable of service in our community. Here was something that came across my desk. It was the Northeast Community Service Day. Um, it was a cleanup. An organization called the Metropolitan Wilmington Urban League was hosting it. I didn't know anything about it. We had a, a Saturday off, so uh, we put on our vests and, and went out. And that's us in the middle of, of Wilmington uh, cleaning up uh, this place. And because we took time to help their community, that's one, two, three, four members that were recruited directly at that event. Because we showed up and we said, we care about your community. And we're not even, this isn't even from our, our neck of the woods, but we're here and we're lions. You know, and, and, and this is, is actually the uh, community outreach uh, uh, director for our, uh, one of our senators in the state of Delaware, who now, he said, listen, I'm so busy, you guys are amazing. Can I join you? I don't know if I can make it to the meetings, but I can do service. I, I called my board and said, hey, can I get an approval? And we inducted him on the spot. <laughs> and so he's a lion, he comes to our service events, we have not ever seen him uh, at a meeting, but he is at every single one of the community events proudly wearing his pin. So, is that a lie? Yes. So, from that, we actually then put a whole partnership together with the Wilmington Urban, Urban League, and we did a science, technology, engineering, arts, and math conference, specifically around the youth, that would not have been possible unless we had partnerships with all of those agencies that, I mean, we had a, a group there that was teaching kids coding. We had a group there that was had a recording studio so they could make a little music video about Lions Rock. I mean, it was awesome. So 
Part of what I do is called a coalition model for club success, and I'll touch more on this uh, in, in the presentation later. But there's a theory. My background is drug prevention. There's a theory of a community coalition. So community coalition uh, has 12 sectors when put together on the right way. You have youth, parents, a business community, media, schools, youth serving organizations, law enforcement, religious or fraternal organizations, civic and volunteer groups, healthcare professionals, a whole uh, list of people. The theory is if you get all of those sectors sitting around one table, there is no community problem that you can't solve. So, when we were forming our Lions Club, I pulled out that list and said, who do we know? How do we get those people sitting around the table? And so we now have members from each one of these sectors. And I mention this because I have a feeling there's probably a drug prevention coalition in most communities that is built this way. And you see one of the things that they have to have on it? Civic and volunteer groups. So when I joined my local drug prevention coalition, I was the only lion on it. Now every single person on the co coalition is a lion. So serve with others and they will serve with you. Uh, don't tell them, show them. Uh, that is something, uh, you know, be out in the community promoting it uh, anyway. This is just a quick example of someone who followed this exact model. This is not rocket science. This is a repeatable step based on community development principles. So this is the Salisbury Pride Alliance. They are from uh, our multiple district. This is someone who worked at a community center. Um, uh, there was a lion who came to his community center and said, oh, you guys do so much great work for the youth. Will you be a lion? And he said, no, I'm too busy. How many times have you gotten that answer when you've asked? Well, I'm too busy. And then they said, well, what can we do for you? And he said, well, we have a barbecue next week. Can you bring some hot dogs? So the lions brought some hot dogs and said, join lions. He said, I'm too busy. Well, it took about a year and a half, two years. But they formed a charter club of now 24 members, all of which you do service in their community. And the way that you answer the question, when someone says, I am too busy, if you are asking someone who is already doing service, you say, listen, I'm not asking you to do anything extra. I'm asking you to do what you're already doing as a lion. And in fact, I'm offering to help you do it, right? You got a service project, if you're serving the youth, we'll show up. So now anyone in, in the entire city of Wilmington knows, if they're working with youth and they need some extra volunteers, they call the lions, because we'll be there for the kids, right? So raising the next generation, all it takes is one. Young adults like to be in organizations that they know have people like them as members. Sometimes it takes young members to, to, to get young members. I mean, I don't mean to call anybody out, but in the table in the back, is it a little bit awkward being the, the youngest people in the room? A little, right? Would it feel better if there was another five or 10 people in your age range? Yeah. Absolutely, right? And that's, that's the tough part. You say, well, if we don't have a young member, how do we get a young member? Um, well, by show of hands, how many of you have children or grandchildren? Okay. So, by show of hands, how many of those have ever helped out with the Lions Project? Okay, most of the same hands. By a show of hands, how many of those actually became Lions? All right, a decent amount of hands. The first time I got someone who was a, a younger member, his name was Lion Vernon, he was like 25. I slapped a yellow vest on him and he was in front and center of everything we did. So we have some, some younger looking lions here, less seasoned, let's put it that way. Uh, why don't we, we make sure we take a picture of them having a good time here at this conference and share it and say, this is what the Lions of 24L are like. We are young, we are active, we are energetic. So you use them in, in that way. Um, Leo's into lions. The fact that your district governor has challenged every club to start a Leo club is an incredible thing. That is the future. That is the ball game. If you can get them serving at the age of 12 and serving through school, uh, they will potentially be the future of this uh, association. So we have a Leo club, as I mentioned. We have a 100% conversion rate. Every single Leo that turns 18 becomes a lion. 
here's how we do it. This is the chess club that I mentioned. As you see, they meet every Thursday, and it's now every Thursday since I've become a lion. They meet underneath our lion's flag. And uh, this young woman here, Lion London, uh, she is now Lion London, um, she asked me for, uh, I asked her what she wanted for her 18th birthday, and she said, a Lion's Club application. <laughs> That's one of those that gets you, get you right there. This is, this is uh, uh, Malachi. Uh, he was uh, the president of, of our Leo Club on September 12th. Uh, he turned 18. On September 17th, he was inducted as a lion. How does this happen? Everything our club does is built around the youth. That's 100%. All of our service activities are there to support the youth. So the youth, for them, lions are that association that cares about them that's there when no one else is, that helps educate and uplift and empower them. So of course, they want to become lions. Here's uh, an, a quick example here. This is us uh, with our Leos. In partnership with, this is at the Wilmington Public Library, we did a, a thing called Barbershop Books where we built bookshelves that went into all the barbershops in the community, and the library donated books for it. And because we had brought out all of these, these members, um, the gentleman in the back that's uh, now Lion Carl Shaw, he's the community outreach director of the Wilmington Public Library. He was so grateful that we had brought this partnership that he joined our club. And standing next to him is the executive director of the Wilmington Public Library, who also then joined our club because of the partnerships that we had created. So, meetings versus service. Welcome to our meeting. We start at 9 o'clock. You'll get woken up again at 4 p.m. Um, younger lions tend to find long meetings to be boring. They are more attuned to doing business and communications uh, over the internet. What is the purpose of your meeting? Uh, they don't like meetings for the sake of having a meeting. If the only information presented in the meeting could have been summed up in an email, they often feel like the meeting was pointless. Make your meetings have a purpose. Connect them to service. We have service at every single meeting that we do. We take cards, and we pass around cards that are on our meeting table. And while we're sitting at the dinner meeting, people write out notes to kids at the pediatric cancer ward. We write out cards in support of troops. So even if you're just sitting at the dinner meeting, right here we could have had cards at every table that could have said love from the Lions uh, 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 of you know, uh, 24L, and we could send them to kids. And the first time you get a letter back from a kid who's, who's, who's in a hospital that has gotten this love message from Lions, oh, it just it reconnects to why you're coming to a meeting. Um, fellowship is important, but that can also be experienced during uh, a service activity. So meetings should be designed for the type of membership that you want. If you want young members, you need to keep that in mind. Our meetings are exactly one hour long. I start a timer. Now, we invite people there early for fellowship, and you're allowed to stay afterwards. So people generally stay for around two hours. But the actual business portion of the meeting is exactly one hour. So we ring the bell, and we say, if you have to go, please go. And that makes a huge difference, especially to the 40 to 50 year old uh, uh, members that have kids. Or we have a whole bunch of 18 to 20 year olds who have school and college the next morning. So they're allowed to participate, but then they don't feel like they have to stay there for the entire time. So uh, reports, resolutions could be shared electronically. So what is the official model of Lions Club International? We serve. Can I hear that one more time? We serve. Okay. Our motto is not we meet. <laughs> we have forgotten that sometimes. I have a t-shirt that says that. I get in trouble at district events. <laughs> but that's how many of you in this room joined Lions to go to a meeting? Look around the room, okay? If the only thing your, uh, your club does is service, you're the best club in existence. Now the meetings are important, fellowship is important, 
But if you're trying to connect to that younger generation, uh, focus on service. That's why I say I never invite someone to a meeting first. I have them come and serve with us. And once they see what we actually do in the community, uh, I, I invite them in. So uh, I mentioned the, the branch clubs. This is uh, the, the sort of final thought, and I will continue on how to specifically engage and develop youth programs uh, in, in the other presentation. But the club that sponsored us was unable to get younger members to join, so they empowered us to have our own branch. And at some point in time, they had to ask themselves a, a very serious question. And that question was, are we okay knowing that there will be lions serving in this community in a hundred years if the name on the banner isn't ours? And that's a tough question. Their answer was yes. That as long as lions are serving, it doesn't matter what the name is, right? The traditions are important, but the service is more important than anything. And they told us when we have five members, they said, well, Lion Daniel, it'll take you about three or four years to get to the 20 you need to charter. We had 40 in about three months. We chartered with 62. So when you look at that, according to the numbers, they had a 62 member loss in one instant. In our multiple district, on all of the ports, they looked like the worst club in the entire multiple district. And yet they had planted a seed. And this is the final thought. It's an old Greek proverb that says, a society or an association becomes truly great when the old men are wise enough to plant seeds for trees that they will never sit in the shade of. So plant those seeds. Empower those youth. If it takes making a branch club that will one day outgrow your club, does it matter as long as they're alive and serving? Thank you. I'm Lion Danny Marnie Elkins, and it's truly a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you, Lion Daniel. So we're all inspired? Yes. Well, 2 o'clock, he's going to continue and tell you a whole lot more more specifics about engaging youth. Um, we've got some awards to give out, but would it be a problem if we put that back to the beginning of our district meeting? Uh, I know it's Wilma, because that room, we have a time frame on. We have to be out of there by 2.45, uh, so they get ready for dinner. So, uh, we're scheduled to be out of here right now for a few minutes break, and then come back to this meeting, and at the very beginning of our district meeting, we'll do the awards, that's okay. So everyone take a break for a couple minutes and come back. Uh, come back to this class. There are two other classes uh, and then board meetings that we've already announced. Uh, and we'll uh, see y'all back in a little bit. Yeah, I thought I'd do a quick one. Yeah.